I know, loads of birds pooped on our bike covers. Sweetie, yeah. we've got loads of bird poop on our bike covers. Anyway, it can go in your backpack today. Good morning. Can I have some cameras? Thank you. Lots and lots of cameras. There you go. It was close, eh? Hey, you win always gets going <laughs> in the end. Yes. Good morning, world. Welcome back to the channel. It is day 17 on the Trans Euro Trail, riding 2,000 miles off road all the way through England and Wales to reach the border to Scotland. And we're here just near the town of Wrexham in Wales. And we just stayed at this little campsite. It's quite interesting, actually. The campsite manager, when he was giving us a tour yesterday, he told us that this building right in front of us was the old granary for the farm. And these little arches underneath were actually used to create airflow underneath where the grain was stored. But also they would light fires in there to heat up the whole store so that all the moisture would come out basically to keep the grain nice and dry so it didn't go rotten. Because Wales is a very, very wet and rainy place, eh? You can see like the grain is grown right here grown here, stored here, but now it's all just a campsite. But this is our last morning in Wales because we are very, very close now to the English border. So let me show you guys where we're heading today. So we are here and the border to England is literally here. So today we are going to be crossing that border and then making our way eastward out of Wrexham and into the county of Cheshire, heading towards this area here the Peak District National Park. We're really hoping that the trails are going to get a little bit easier now that the landscape is becoming much, much flatter. So we're kind of hoping that we can reach close to the Peak District today. I think it's around 100 miles to get there though, so oh, it might be wishful thinking. Yeah, let's see how far we can get today. It would be amazing if we can reach the Peak District, but it's already 11 o'clock and we have a long way to go, so better hit the road, let's go. Hi little guy. Oh, you're a giddy, aren't you? Just stopped here. <laughs> have to fix my water and this dog just ran up. Where are you coming from? Hey, are you coming from the farm? Are you? Oh yes, I remember this kind of trail. <laughs> <laughs> we're not on the Welsh trails anymore. Not the Rocky <laughs> Mountains. We're in the overgrown single track footpaths. This is probably the border to England. I think we may have even passed the border to England already. <laughs> Ollie, that's ridiculous here. Yeah, this is definitely an English trail. Oh, be careful, it's like spiky. Okay, this is, uh, wait a minute, I don't know. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, destiny. Look at all the blackberries. Wow, look at this one. Oh, do you want to pick some? Yeah. Look at the size of that one. Mmm. Oh. That is like so sweet. Yeah, this one. Look at this. There's massive. Wow. Massive. Mm. Very sweet. Mm. Some really good berries right there, hey? Yeah. Wow. Guys, and look at this view as well. Amazing. I could be here the whole day just eating them. <laughs> wow. Mmm, mmm. Guys, seriously, these are the biggest blackberries ever. <laughs> Look at them. They're like the size of an apple. Nice little nutritional snack in the morning. It almost makes me forget how ridiculous this track is. Oh my god, my bike is gone. Seriously, I parked my bike here. 
No, you did not. <laughs> I'm not so there. Well, somebody stole it from this trail in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> Seriously, guys, look. Can you hold my hand? It's like a proper cliff here. <gasps> oh my god. Wow, we are right on the edge, hey? Right on the edge. We're at the top of the like D Valley, so the River D is down at the very bottom. Oh my god, that's quite scary, hey? Let's try to stay on track, hey? Let me check. Oh Jesus, hold on a minute. Wait a minute. There's like a little cliff here. That's that's un undoable for us. Oh, okay. Let me have a look. I mean the whole whole bridge bridge fell off here. Let's see, because here. Uh-huh. Ooh. Here, people have gone down, yeah? You can see, uh -huh. they've gone down here, and then they've gone up here. But I don't know, that's pretty tough for us. I mean, with this rock, I'm not sure. Should I move this rock, uh -huh. and then try to get up just that rock? Yeah, the whole bridge has been washed out, hey? Yeah, exactly. I would almost say it's better for me to try there, like that. I mean, I could sort of see that working. Yeah, but um, you have to be careful not hitting the tree, no? Yeah, yeah, I'd have to go up and then here. I'd have to make sure that I avoid this bit. It would be even better to just go up, up there, straight here. No, I think that's too... Could I, could I do that? Up there? Oh, probably not, no. I mean, if the clearance would do it, maybe I could. Shall I try it? Don't know. Okay. Yeah, actually, you know what? I think that's actually doable. With a bit of momentum, I reckon I can pop up over that. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll give it a go. I'll just go up, over, up. And if I get stuck, we'll just take the bike back. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I'll try give it. it a go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Give this a go. If I can do it with mine, then I'll do it with yours. I think this is going to put this uh, Van Van's clearance to the test. Ready? Okay. Go in. Oh, I can't actually get any momentum there. Wait a second. Okay. Okay. Oh! There we go. Just about, hey? <laughs> no. So the tread on Lavi's tyre is definitely not as good as the tread on mine, so let's see if we can actually get up the other side of this hill. <laughs> Woo! It went there. It did it. <laughs> there you go. First obstacle of the day, conquered. Look at this trail, guys. It's beautiful. Oh! <laughs> Wow, it's so nice with the fern here, totally overgrowing the trail. Beautiful. It's like the prehistoric jungle here. Yeah. No, really pleasant actually. Second gear. Oh. <laughs> Oof, luckily I'm wearing a, hel a helmet. <laughs> yeah. So far actually we had just like really, really nice calm trails, you know, nothing crazy, just very pleasant. This is what I like. Yeah, we're back in England. We can do the miles now. I just want to have like one really boring day on trail, you know. So we decided, seeing as it's a peaceful day on trail, a nice relaxing ride through the countryside, we would stop at a little cafe called the Lockside Cafe because it's Lockside. It's next to this massive three flight lock on the Langochlin Canal. I saw this place on the Tet route 
as a little point of interest stop and we thought why not treat ourselves eh? The wilderness trails are over now it's all about lockside cafes and nice countryside riding. What an amazing bit of engineering. So now they're gonna open the bottom half of those gates to let the water in. The boat will rise up, then they can open that gate. The boat will go through and then they'll do the same thing over and over again until the boat gets to the top. Oh yeah, it's quite a long river. I don't really want to get my feet wet again, they are dry, <laughs> finally! <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> wow! That looks like a very, very big river. Okay, back on track. Perfect. Looks like this is about as urban as the Trans Euro Trail gets. So we're just coming into the town of Crewe and this section of the trail crossing the whole of this area is just really built up around here. So there's not really any green lanes to be honest. I mean, you've got basically Liverpool and Manchester to the north and then you've got Stoke-on-Trent to the south. So there's a lot going on here. There is no room for green lanes. No, nope, they've all been paved. But anyway, the good thing is that it makes for very, very quick progress. Yeah, we can finally make some distance. After more than 10 days struggling in Wales, I think we finally might make 100 miles today. Let's see, hey? But anyway, welcome to Crewe. Look guys, there's a whole other world out there. A world of motorways and fast cars, traffic and trucks. And here we are on this little lane. We can just stop here on the side of the road. Nice and quiet, but you need two weeks longer to get to your destination. What a contrast, hey? What a contrast. Coming to another Trans Euro Trail point of interest that I saw on the map. Apparently it's an ancient Neolithic burial site and it is just here. Let's go see some ancient stones. You got the info? Got me info. <laughs> there we go. Wow, cool. This site dates to around 5,500 BC and it's called the Bridestones. It was actually described in 1764 as being 110 meters long by 11 meters wide. But actually a lot of the stones have been stolen over the years since then and used in building or used in road building. This little site that we're on right now is all that remains of what was once a massive Neolithic burial site. So these stones would have actually been the walls of the burial chamber and then there would have been massive stones laid on top and then on top of that earth so it was basically just a big mound which is known as a cairn and this cairn is called the bride stones 
Now, the Bridestone's name, they don't actually know where it came from, but legend has it that a recently married couple were actually murdered here, and then the burial chamber was created around them. Another theory could be the ancient Celtic goddess Brigantia, and that this site was named in honour of Brigantia. But nobody knows. But it's still a pretty cool 5,500 year old site. Well, it's so crazy to think about that these massive stones may not have actually been sourced from this local area. Just like with Stonehenge and other ancient monuments, the stones may have been transported hundreds and hundreds of miles to be here. They actually did a recent study on Stonehenge and found that one of the stones was sourced from the highlands of Scotland, nearly on the other side of Britain. Crazy to think that five and a half thousand years ago, these massive stones were being transported across this massive countryside area. No roads, no engines, no horses. Almost unthinkable really, isn't it? So there we go, guys. A little bit of ancient British culture for you on our tour through Britain. And uh, we had a little look at the map because it's currently 5 p.m. So time is getting on. So we've had a little look locally to see if there's any camping. And we saw on the map that there's a biker friendly campsite, which is literally only 1.2 miles away from here. And on the pictures, there seems to be alpacas there which would be awesome of course to see so we're gonna head over there now we tried calling but they didn't answer so we just decided we're just gonna go pay them a visit and see if they've got a pitch for us okay it's up here somewhere Ooh, yeah, some kind of entrance. Doors open. So we just met the owner and uh, he's just showing us over to the field. And then he says he's gonna show us around. And apparently here, not only do they have alpacas, but they've got wallabies, they've got meerkats, peacocks. Pretty cool. Oh, look at this view. Wow. Oh, and there's alpacas just in the field. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, anywhere here, yeah? Oh, look at the alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hello. They're just sitting here in the middle of the field with everybody camping around. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them so much. Favorite campsite of the trip so far. Oh, I love alpacas. Oli, seriously, I want something like this later. Can we make sure that we have like a nice campsite? If we get more subscribers, then maybe in the future. So everybody, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, help us to grow <laughs> and buy our own farm with alpacas. Yes. She's told us as well that they actually sort of rescued these animals from a place where the owner, the previous owner, they didn't want them anymore. And she was like, oh, I take them all. <laughs> I take them all. No, seriously, I'm super excited to be here and that we decided to come here and see this place and just get inspired by this cool couple here. <laughs> Wow, guys, look at this bird. Looks beautiful, but also cheeky. Very cheeky. Like you, you look cheeky. <laughs> you look the same like the bird. Oh, you're on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, okay. Facebook. I posted that one, I seen you the other yeah. day, and it just popped up on Facebook. I don't know how. Oh, that's so good. So people must be sharing it. That's great. Because yeah. we, we need that, oh, though, wow. right? Oh, yes, little chickies. They're little ducks, but they grow so quick, the ducks. How many ducks do you have then? There's six adult ducks and eight ducklings. Oh, beauty. Oh, it's quite jumpy. But the peacocks, can't they just fly away if they no, want? No, they can, but they don't. They can, but they just stick yeah, around. Stick around. Wow. Oh, that's cool. They know, they know where they're fed. This is actually a good one. I picked the good ones up. Oh, wow. That's definitely a good but one. But the male loses the, the, yeah, all of this, this one. This one's from Clyde. So will he, will he lose all those feathers? Yeah, they'll all come out. All wow. the long ones. <laughs> oh, and there's the meerkats. It's near feeding time, you see. Oh, wow. Oh, hello, little meerkats. 
Hi. How old are they? These ones are about five. They weren't very friendly, but now they're slowly starting to get better. They've got the sand. Yeah, the sand. They've got, got yeah. the, the pipes in so they can tunnel under out of the way if they want to do. As oh, animals no. do. Really? So, oh wow. <gasps> yeah, we not going to escape. No. Um, oh. Are you alright? Hey. Oh. Dead and mischievous. Yeah. Hello. Hi. They're really, really yeah, friendly. They're very, very cute. Billy, I believe. And that's Twiggy. 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 Billy and Twiggy. Billy and Twiggy. It's been a while since we've seen one of these, hey? Yeah. We lived in Australia for two years. Yeah. Pete was one that we rescued. Right. Okay. So we don't really know how old he is. And then he was by himself, so we've got another two just basically just to keep him company because it's not fair than being by themselves. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Bruno. <laughs> wow. These are Bennett's wallabies. Oh, they're lovely. Very lovely. Hello. She's the boss. She's the boss. They have so much character. Yeah. Yeah. He's the naughty one. This one here. <laughs> Wait, this one here? This one here. <laughs> Aren't you? Huh? And he's the naughty one? He's the naughty one. He's the youngest. <laughs> he chases all the other animals. Really? Thank you, Graham. Oli. Thank you for the door. Yes, Thank you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> we, will give, we will give you a sticker as well. Yes. A sticker yeah. from us, yes. Just give a knock on the morning before yes, you go. Yes, okay. we will. We will. Okay. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Oh, I love this property here. Wow. So these are like wild blueberries? Um, yes, they're smaller. And so they're not really, they are bilberries, not blueberries. They're quite mm. tart. But bilberries, so, okay. Bilberries. So mm. you, put, you put them in. Uh, same with apple. But you need the apple to bolt them out. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all here. That's all of this plant, yeah? Yeah, all this all this stuff. Here. All this stuff. Wow. And so, but they're quite hard to see, look. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So you think there aren't any there, but they're, they're yeah. all around. Mm. To be honest, I'm not sure I even like their taste. <laughs> <laughs> they're very <laughs> sweet. They're yeah. not very sweet. They're quite tart. Wow. Look at this. We made it to the top of the world! Look guys, you can just about see the city of Manchester all the way over there in the distance. How cool is that? The uh, camp's just down there and we thought we'd take a walk up to the top of the hill, have a little look at the view. And this is such a spectacular location, look at this. Behind us here, those are the hills of the Peak District and that's where the trails await us to ride tomorrow. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just so excited with this property or this biker camp, what they have down there. You can feel like their passion and how much they love it. So if you're around like the Peak District or somewhere around here and you love camping, you really have to check them out. Or if you love alpacas. Yeah. <laughs> or meerkats, or wallabies. <laughs> now, honestly, these guys have a beautiful place up here. Yeah. They're like right nearly on the top of the hill and it's just spectacular. It's spectacular. So yeah, that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time. Look at this. <laughs> really on the edge of the cliff, <laughs> sweetheart. You cannot do that. In a genuinely dangerous situation, you're not allowed to do that. And you're not allowed to look over like that because you might fall over. I don't think that I do. Yes, you will. Hello. Hello.